We're going to do some meditation. We're going to meditate on the three characteristics. So find whatever position is comfortable for you. And we're going to start, of course, with impermanence, anicca. Perhaps this is obvious for most of the world that things are changing and impermanent, that nothing will last, but it's very essential, very crucial, very fundamental, a fundamental characteristic for the world, for all phenomena. Moreover, it's always present, always there for us to be aware of, to contemplate on. And so we can be aware of impermanence at the ear. Hearing the people in the kitchen, the dishes moving, the birds. We hear these sounds and then they might change, might morph and eventually they stop. And so permanence is the, the changing, the, the instability of phenomena. Impermanence is also their cessation when they, when the phenomena stops, when the sound stops, or the thought, or the feeling, or life itself. But impermanence is also the re-arising of phenomena. when the sound picks up again, when another feeling comes our way, when we find ourselves in another life. This instability or uncertainty or impredictability This is a Nietzsche. All conditioned things are impermanent. They are unstable. And they will not last forever.
seeing this quality, this characteristic, or even a law, this law of the universe, of phenomena, The Buddha said, then, it must be dukkha. And dukkha has two flavors, you could say, two, two aspects. If things are impermanent, then, no matter how pleasant, or how delightful, or how much I desire something to remain, it will never satisfy. Because the very conditions which brought about pleasant feeling or a delightful taste or pleasant sights or sounds or These, by their very nature, are subject to disintegration, to falling apart, to fading away. And so we will always be left wanting, desiring. We will always be left unsatisfied. The second aspect of dukkha is well, the painful part. Because things are impermanent, pleasant feeling won't last forever, and also neutral feeling won't last forever. So, whether we want to experience painful feeling or not, it will come our way. be associated with what is disliked. How many of us accidentally stub our toe every so often? Completely unpredictable undesired and yet that toe is hitting that table. Or how about the aging of the body? The pain in the joints. The increase in illness as we grow older. Or how about the hunger that we feel every day? This need to feed in order to keep the body alive. This leads us to the final characteristic, this aspect of not-self. Which simply means that things are out of our control. One cannot simply turn off the pain switch, turn on the pleasant switch. One cannot remove hunger or the need to feed. We cannot be healthy simply because we want to be.
due to craving and ignorance, we are caught up in a, a situation, a body. And while there is influence and we can direct it in certain ways, we're bound up within a certain framework. And we, we don't have the keys, the tools to, to change that framework as we see to our desires. So the Buddha, he was probably like, okay, okay, things are nothing stable here. <laughs> there's nothing lasting here. Okay, nothing's going to satisfy me. And there's painful feeling. I don't like painful feeling. And I've got no control. What is this? Reflecting on these three characteristics, it makes it very clear how undesirable samsara is. It's a symbol. I think it's a pagan symbol, but it's the symbol of the snake eating itself, eating its own tail. And as it inches closer to its tail, the tail also pulls further away. So it'll never fully consume itself. It's it'll never quite be there. It'll never quite be enough. And so from time to time we should make use of this to become aware of this core aspect of the Dhamma. Because the Buddha declared that whether or not a Tathagata arises in the world, whether or not there's a Buddha here to teach us this Dhamma, these things will remain fixed and constant. These things will remain characteristics of samsara. Namely, that things are impermanent, that things are painful and unsatisfactory, and that things are not self and beyond our control. But every so often, and we find ourselves every so often in that situation where a Tathagata does arise in the world, where he breaks through to and understands these characteristics. And then out of compassion, out of the interest or the care for other beings to be liberated, he teaches and declares and makes open the teaching which leads outside of samsara. Now, to bring the meditation to a close, I ask you, which of the three characteristics do you find to be most obvious or interesting, or which one attracts you the most? Perhaps impermanence is the most clear, or maybe dukkha. Oh, so much pain, la. <laughs> or maybe it's obvious to you that I have no control in this life, no real control. So please take it home and think about it.
But even though there's no control, no controller, no self here to, to be a master over the world, there is influence. Right now we are exercising that influence by cultivating the mind, by developing wholesome states. And through this cultivation of wholesome states, when we develop the mind, when we make our minds bright and pliant and wieldy and soft, It gives others the opportunity to come and rejoice and make use of our wholesome conduct. So let us all recite together. Hidang me nyati nang ho tu sukita hon tu nyatayo. Hidang no nyati nang ho tu sukita hon Tunyatayo, he dung born yati nang ho to Sukita hon tunyatayo, Heta wata chaam hehi, Sampadang punya sampadang, Sabbe sata anumo dantu, Sabba sampati sidia. And lastly, let us make an aspiration for Nibbana so that one day we'll be able to clearly see the three characteristics. Please repeat after me. Idang me punyang asawakaya bahang ho tu. Idang me punyang nibbana sa pachayo ho tu.